Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. Just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. And we pray that the reading of the word of the Lord and the overview and the study of the word of the Lord together would be a blessing to you. And we pray that the Lord would lead us closer to him, even as we search for him through his word. Today we're busy in the book of Nahum, and we're going to be going through chapters 1, 2, and 3, so completing the book of Nahum in today's reading. And we're going to take a quick look at the overview. It's a short reading today, so I'm going to take some time and go through the overview a little bit and just look into the patterns and the imagery and the types within this book as well. Getting into the overview, we see that the book of Nahum was written in approximately 713 B.C., now, he is writing in a time after the Assyrians had invaded and conquered the northern part of Israel, but before the destruction of Nineveh and Assyria. Now, not much is known about the person Nahum, but Nahum was a prophet called by God to prophesy against Nineveh, but also to preach about the justice of God on the oppressive nations. The book of Nahum is in some respect a sequel to the book of Jonah written about 100 to 150 years after Jonah preached to the Ninevites. Now this book is about the burden and prophecy of the destruction of Nineveh. Jonah had a message and was given a message to the Ninevites. The Lord said to him, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness is come up before me. And Jonah began to enter into the city about a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. The message of Jonah to the Ninevites was a message of destruction. But then we see that the Ninevites turned, and they humbled themselves before the Lord, and the Lord stayed his punishment. But when we look at it, we see the justice of God on oppressive and evil nations. We must never forget or mistake God's mercy for God not fulfilling his word. If he said it, he is going to do it. He might stay his hand for a little while because the people have humbled themselves, but he will bring to completion that which he has promised. Now, this book also gives us imagery that we cannot place in the time of the destruction of Nineveh, but rather it's a picture that we can easily imagine in our time. If we look at Nahum chapter 2, verses 3 to 6, this imagery seems to be talking about automobiles or things that we can, we can understand in our time. He's talking about these chariots and these beams of light that's just flying down these highways and all of these things. Very, very good imagery, but imagery that we can relate to much more than the people of those days. Now we're going to get into Nineveh, the city, and who is Nineveh? Nineveh was actually the capital city of Assyria. Assyria was responsible for the total destruction of northern Israel. And according to Genesis 10, verses 8 to 12, Nineveh was actually a part of the Assyrian Empire, which began with Nimrod. Now, Nimrod is a very interesting character, and we went through a little bit about him in the book of Genesis. But he is actually quite a prominent figure within the word because of what he represents. Now, this nation was extremely violent and destructive in the way that it ruled and conquered it was referred to as Sin City by many of the historians because of their violent and bloodthirsty nature. It was also quite a large city for the time. Historians estimate that the boundary wall of the city was about 100 kilometers in length. Now, when we look at it, we also have these references to the Assyrian. Now, when we look at scripture, we find that the land of Assyria was the kingdom of Nimrod. We've been through the book of Micah as well, and verses 5 and 6 in the book of Micah says, And this man shall be the peace, when the Assyrian shall come into our land, and when he shall tread in our palaces, then shall we raise against him seven shepherds and eight principal men. And they shall waste the land of Assyria with the sword, and the land of Nimrod in the entrances thereof. Thus shall he deliver us from the Assyrian, when he cometh into our land, and when he treadeth within our borders. So we see that this land of Nineveh was the capital of the city of Assyria. It was the land of Nimrod. Nimrod is one of the first antichrists mentioned in the Bible. We see in the book of Genesis, it refers to him as the hunter before the Lord. That was the hunter that people sought before they sought the Lord for protection. 
The Assyrian or the king of Assyria is referring to the Antichrist in a spiritual sense. And that's something important that we need to understand and we need to have uh, in the back of our minds as we go through the book of Nahum. Now, what can we see in the chapters? Let's go through the chapters quite quickly. We go to chapter 1 and we see that this chapter is dedicated to the description of God, particularly in reference to the just nature of God. This is a prophecy on the city of Nineveh, but beside verse 1, Nahum does not mention Nineveh or Assyria in the chapter at all. The focus is on God and God's justice. Even though he is slow to anger, he will repay evil and will not let an evil empire rule forever. We can see that God's judgment on evil is a good thing and good news to the innocent. Isaiah 52 verse 1 says so beautifully, How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace, that bringeth good tidings of good, that publisheth salvation, that saith unto Zion, Thy God reigneth. That's so lovely. Good tidings, tidings of peace, tidings of good, tidings of salvation. That is what the Lord will allow to reign. Then we get to chapter 2, and in this chapter we see the description of the war, the fall of Nineveh and the downfall of Assyria. The Lord sends fearful armies against the enemies of Judah and Israel. Now please take notice of the imagery because the imagery seems quite ahead of its time. And so in that we can just see that this is not pertaining just to the physical and the natural uh, Nineveh that was destroyed, but also it can be related to our time as well. And we can see that there are so many things that we can relate to our age. Then we get to chapter 3. And chapter 3 deals with the results of the city's downfall and the miserable ruin of Nineveh. Verse 1 in chapter 3 says, Woe to the bloody city. It is all full of lies and robbery. And this is quite amazing when we look at this little book. It's such a, a short book in the Old Testament. And yet there is so much in there. When we look at that, prophecies that were given, 16 prophecies against the city of Nineveh that were all completed. And looking at the historians, and you'll see within the book, it says that Nineveh will be destroyed by fire. And then it also says that Nineveh will be destroyed by flood. And you think, how can the two work together? And yet when you look at the historical writings of Nineveh, and you find the archaeological findings of that, you will see that the city was both destroyed by fire and by flood. And the word of the Lord that came to fruition there, because what the Lord promises, that he is going to do. And so it's such an amazing book. Look at it. Go through some of the archaeological findings. It really increases your faith to know that the Lord promised these things and how he brought it to completion so perfectly according to his word. It's very interesting and it just gives you such a joy to know that what the Lord promised he will do, not so much for the destruction for his people, but that he promised us life and life more abundantly and we can hold on to that. So that's where we're going to leave it for today. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you. May he give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the word today. Nahum. Chapter 1. The Burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision of Nahum the Elkoshite. God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. The Lord is slow to anger, and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebuketh the sea, and maketh it dry, and drieth up all the rivers. Bashan languisheth, and Carmel, and the flower of Lebanon languisheth. The mountains quake at him, and the hills melt, and the earth is burned at his presence. Yea, the world and all that dwell therein. Who can stand before his indignation, and who can abide in the fierceness of his anger? His fury is poured out like fire, and the rocks are thrown down by him. The Lord is good a stronghold in the day of trouble, and he knoweth them that trust in him. But with an overrunning flood, he will make an utter end of the place thereof, and darkness shall pursue his enemies. What do ye imagine against the Lord? He will make an utter end. Affliction shall not rise up the second time. 
For while they be folded together as thorns, and while they are drunken as drunkards, they shall be devoured as stubble fully dry. There is one come out of thee that imagineth evil against the Lord, a wicked counselor. Thus saith the Lord, though they be quiet, and likewise many, yet thus shall they be cut down when he shall pass through. Though I have afflicted thee, I will afflict thee no more. For now will I break his yoke from off thee, and will burst thy bonds in sunder. And the Lord hath given a commandment concerning thee, that no more of thy name be sown. Out of the house of thy gods will I cut off the graven image and the molten image. I will make thy grave, for thou art vile. Behold upon the mountains the feet of him that bringeth good tidings, that publisheth peace. O Judah, keep thy solemn feasts, perform thy vows, for the wicked shall no more pass through thee. He is utterly cut off. Chapter 2 He that dasheth in pieces is come up before thy face. Keep the munition, watch the way, make thy loins strong, fortify thy power mightily. For the Lord hath turned away the excellency of Jacob as the excellency of Israel. For the emptiers have emptied them out and marred their vine branches. The shield of his mighty men is made red. The valiant men are in scarlet. The chariots shall be with flaming torches in the day of his preparation, and the fir trees shall be terribly shaken. The chariots shall rage in the streets. They shall jostle one against another in the broad ways. They shall seem like torches. They shall run like the lightnings. He shall recount his worthies. They shall stumble in their walk. They shall make haste to the wall thereof. The defense shall be prepared. The gates of the rivers shall be opened, and the palace shall be dissolved. And Huzab shall be led away captive. She shall be brought up, and her maid shall lead her as with the voice of doves, tabering upon their breasts. But Nineveh is of old like a pool of water, yet they shall flee away. Stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Take ye the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold. For there is none end of the store and glory out of all the pleasant furniture. She is empty and void and waste, and the heart melteth and the knees smite together and much pain is in all loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness. Where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions, where the lion, even the old lion, walked, and the lions whelped, and none made them afraid? The lion did tear in pieces enough for his whelps, and strangled for his lionesses, and filled his holes with prey, and his dens with raven. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will burn her chariots in the smoke, and the sword shall devour thy young lions, and I will cut off thy prey from the earth, and the voice of thy messengers shall no more be heard. Chapter 3 Woe to the bloody city! It is all full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not, the noise of a whip, and the noise of the rattling of the wheels, and of the prancing horses, and of the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. And there is a multitude of slain, and a great number of carcasses, and there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses, because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts, that selleth nations through her whoredoms, and families through her witchcrafts. Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness, and the kingdoms thy shame. And I will cast abominable filth upon thee, and make thee vile, and will set thee as a gazing stock. And it shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee, and say, Nineveh is laid waste, who will bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for thee? Art thou better than populous No, that was situate among the rivers, that had the waters round about it, whose rampart was the sea, and her wall was from the sea? Ethiopia and Egypt were her strength, and it was infinite. Hut and Lubim were thy helpers. Yet was she carried away, she went into captivity. Her young children also were dashed in pieces at the top of all the streets, and they cast lots for her honorable men, and all her great men were bound in chains. Thou also shalt be drunken, thou shalt be hid, thou also shalt seek strength because of the enemy. 
All thy strongholds shall be like fig trees with the first ripe figs. If they be shaken, they shall even fall into the mouth of the eater. Behold, thy people in the midst of thee are women. The gates of thy land shall be set wide open unto thine enemies. The fire shall devour thy bars. Draw thee waters for the siege. Fortify thy strongholds. Go into clay and tread the mortar. Make strong the brick kill. There shall the fire devour thee. The sword shall cut thee off. It shall eat thee up like the canker worm. Make thyself many as the canker worm. Make thyself many as the locusts. Thou hast multiplied thy merchants above the stars of heaven. The canker worm spoileth and flieth away. Thy crowned are as the locusts, and thy captains as the great grasshoppers which camp in the hedges in the cold day. But when the sun ariseth, they flee away, and their place is not known where they are. Thy shepherds slumber, O king of Assyria. Thy nobles shall dwell in the dust. Thy people is scattered upon the mountains, and no man gathereth them. There is no healing of thy bruise. Thy wound is grievous. All that hear the brute of thee shall clap the hands over thee. For upon whom hath not thy wickedness passed continually? The End of Nahum